you come back. Hey, I'm Eli Johnson with PLCCulture.com. Thank you guys so much for having me. Of course, Hi, thank you for talking with us. All right, so firstly, I have to congratulate you guys on the film. I was able to get a look at the screener a few days ago. Um, really like spine chilling film. Oh, <laughs> you guys man. did such a great job keeping the suspense and the tension throughout. Uh, so I, I definitely want to get into some of the technical aspects. Um, you guys uh, began filming the film during the COVID pandemic and when things kind of took off there. What were some of the difficulties in navigating that with your scheduling, yeah. the shooting, and school photography? Could you talk about that process, Will? Yeah, I mean, uh, despite some people thinking you, you could, you can't really make this movie any more easily during COVID because it's told on computer screens. In terms of production, it kind of worked like any other movie. Um, but I mean, you know, kind of just in time for us, there were tools so that we could at least do the previs process remotely with our editors um, and, 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 you know, kind of work over a distance. It, it made things trickier, but uh, the tools were just barely there in time for COVID, really. Absolutely. So jumping into the direct a sequel to a film as big and as prominent as uh, Searching, uh, was there any pressure that you guys kind of felt going into it, or was there anything you kind of wanted to preserve from the original one, uh, Nick? Oh, yeah, absolutely. A lot of pressure. I mean, um, we... Uh, we wanted to do the fans of the of, of searching justice for sure, and a lot of that came down to Seven and Niche uh, in writing searching um, created a very unique tone, um, and then in making the movie, we discovered uh, the, you know the five of us Seven Niche Natalie and me and Will all kind of created uh, rules of of searching and, and like a certain cinematic language I guess you could say, and so. Um, yeah, like uh, we wanted to take that, but we knew that it, we couldn't just recreate searching. We had to do something new and different. And a lot of that came down to finding uh, like a story that actually had a youthful protagonist, a younger protagonist. And that unlocked a lot of opportunities for us to, to make it, you know, kind of bigger and better in some ways. So so we can make it a little bit more energetic um, and, uh, and, and continue to innovate on the format so that this movie in some ways carried on the same spirit with which we made Searching, I guess. Absolutely. So kind of touching on what you talked about with a little bit of the um, post-production and things like that, um, how much is planned as far as like storyboarding is concerned, as far as kind of like making sure you have enough raw footage versus like footage that you edit in and create graphics for? Like how closely do you work with the teams who do that and what was that process like for this film? Yeah, I mean, we uh, our two editors, Ariel and Austin, were involved with this movie a couple months before production even began. So we didn't storyboard. We actually created a uh, an animatic out of actual screenshots of the internet and videos of the two of our and our friends' faces kind of acting out the movie. Um, and, and it became a really invaluable tool on set. And then it actually became... Uh, a template for us to cut the live action footage into, so it actually became useful even after production. Absolutely. So this film takes place in not just the United States this time around, but also in a foreign country. You guys have the beautiful set location and setting of Colombia. So um, firstly, before we get into some of the fun stuff, what were some of the difficulties in actually kind of getting out there to shoot in just like a completely foreign terrain? Yeah, I mean, that's one of the uh, the great things that Seven and Niche put into the treatment was making it bigger and better and making it on a global scale. The difficulties, I think, really had to do with the pandemic. Um, it was still pretty early on. It was still in the middle of kind of the peak of the pandemic at that time. So traveling to a foreign country already, you know, you're, you're, you're meeting crew on the fly um, and there's a language barrier. Um, but uh, we also had the pandemic and a curfew in Cartagena. Um, and uh, so there were a lot of challenges there. But I, I, honestly, everyone in Colombia was so great and the crew was so professional. In some ways, it was almost smoother than some of our, some of our principal photography in, in the US, honestly, because they were so well prepared and so professional. Yeah, absolutely. So one thing I was talking with uh, Anish and Sev and um you know, about a little bit earlier was the chemistry between all the cast members. And I know that with a film like this, because a lot of it does take place in two different places, uh, I know they were mentioning that rehearsals were something that you guys got into, but kind of how do you maintain the chemistry between all the actors for all the scenes on set when they're not always in the same place? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, for that? It, it was one of our biggest priorities going in, scheduling, 
In terms of actually creating the shooting schedule, it was kind of our biggest ask that as much as possible uh, in the major media emotional scenes, people get to at least kind of, you know, read in, in, in their ear with their scene partner um, so that they can kind of pick up the vibe of how they're going to react, what their cadence is going to be. And uh, we didn't always manage to make it happen, but we usually did. And, uh, and, and I think just the actors being able to at least do the scene once or twice with each other goes a long way in, in terms of making sure they're on the same wavelength. And to our actors' credit, um, Joachim came to set to read with Storm. He didn't have to, but he did that so that he, when he's doing his scene, he could see how she's playing it. Um, and likewise, Storm called in literally to Columbia from the U.S. to read with Joachim to, to repay that favor. Amy so it, Decker, yeah, and Amy came. Amy all the came to set. Were very generous with their time to make this happen. So I, I like it. it that it really took them taking that extra step um, to show each other respect as performers, I think. Yeah. Absolutely. And, it, and the, the connection really comes through on screen, which is kind of why I wanted to touch on it and, and talk about it a little bit. You know, Storm, Storm Raid is a very young actress, but she really has a lot of maturity in, you know, the way that she plays the role. So um, kind of touching off of those, the back of that, what was the relevance for you guys as directors in kind of telling this story at this particular time? You know, we come out of the pandemic and a lot of people are traveling now. And this is a film about being a little more careful when you travel. <laughs> so uh, what do you guys feel like is the relevance in this topic at this time? I mean, this this outline was created before COVID even began. So it might be one of those, any resemblance to reality is purely coincidental. <laughs> but uh, I... I in a way, it is interesting, and we are lucky to, you know, th that things kind of came out the way they did. I think my favorite, you know, I, I, the there's a lot of um, personal, um, emotional stuff in this movie about just mothers and daughters that I think we see in our own family relationships. But one of my favorite things in this movie is the connection between June and Javi. Um, that there's this, like, very immediate emotional connection of two people from extremely different backgrounds that are connecting with each other through some sort of hardship uh, on, on an international level. And so I think, yeah, I think that's personally my, my favorite thing when I watch the movie and the thing that I find most emotional. Yeah, absolutely. And I was talking to Anish, one of the things that we touched on before we wrapped up was that he was mentioning that there were certain references to the previous film and certain Easter eggs and things that oh, yeah. you, kind of, you guys placed in the background. Uh, did you, without giving too much away, of course, <laughs> did you guys like place anything kind of like for yourself or the next set of uh, directors that there was to be a sequel kind of for people to look forward to in the backgrounds? There are there are little shout outs to other non-searching franchise movies that might happen. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I don't think I don't think we've made it far enough in the brainstorming phases of a follow up to this one yet. Absolutely. There's a lot to be found in there, though, if you look. <laughs> yeah, it did, this film is definitely more than a one-time watch. I feel like there's oh, yeah. a lot of... <laughs> it's got <laughs> great replay value, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. You don't rewatch so this little... film, you scrub through it the second time. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so wrapping up kind of... Uh, well, I just kind of want to get, you know, you guys' perspective on this. Uh, what would you like the viewers to kind of take out of the film? What would you like them to walk away thinking about uh, with a film like this, uh, Nick? I think the movie... It, uh, at the end of the day, the core of the movie is about, um, it's a coming of age movie about um, learning uh, not to, t you know, I think June is taking her mom for granted and she's growing through this movie uh, by learning that her mom is a real person um, and that uh, she's made sacrifices for her that she, she took for granted. She, I mean, she didn't know about, but she took for granted. And I think that's something personally that I see in my, honestly, in my sister and my mom's relationship. Um, and um, I, I think that's a really I important part of growing up. So I think that's one major, major takeaway I'd love for audiences to walk away from. How about you, Will? What do you think, uh, would you like people to take out of it? Uh, that's very similar to my answer. I mean, at the end of the day, there's tech and there's a lot of differences in how it's told, but what, it, what it's gonna live or die on is, is the family relationships it tells and what it says about you know, us as people and our, our ability to connect with each other. Absolutely. Well, once again, guys, absolutely stellar film. I look forward for, you know, getting the reception and the release and everything. Once it's released this month, I'm super excited to, you know, review the film and everything like that. You guys did such an awesome job. The scripting to the directing, everything is totally stellar. So thank you guys so much for your time talking about Missing today. And uh, thank you for your time. Man, thank you thank so you much, man. so much. That's awesome.